Alrighty then, so that's filming. Okay, so this is uh, Adam's cameras, no, Adam's watches, take one. Well, hi guys, this is something different, isn't it? Welcome to my breakfast area slash edge of my living room where I have had to create a full-blown studio because of coronavirus. Now, obviously last week I was out in the van and I was trying to make my way back to LA. We got back, we're safe, everything is good. Um, but now pretty much everywhere is on a full lockdown, which means there are some limitations into the type of videos that I can make. However, that isn't gonna stop me. So this week, I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit about my watch collection, which I have right here in front of me. The reason for doing this is because obviously very recently you will have seen that on the Producer Michael channel, I was very kindly gifted a Jacob & Co Epic X and previously to that, I was gifted a lovely Panerai. So basically I've been building this little watch collection which ranges from anywhere from $100 G-Shocks up to $18,000 Jacobs and everything in between. And a lot of you have been asking me on Instagram, so I figured why not show you guys? So here we go, let's get into it. Let's start with this one. This one right here is an Automatic 1912, which is a brand that I had never heard of. And this watch is from a thrift store, an antique store, and I bought this because it was so ugly. Now, it has these crazy pusher protectors uh, or, you know, dial protectors, whatever you want to call it. Um, this thing is built like a tank. So it came on a brown leather strap originally, and it looked like this weird sort of steampunk, post-apocalyptic, weird-looking design. Um, and I was actually very drawn to the fact that it is huge. I mean, f across here, it must be 55 millimeters. It's massive. Um, and then on the face, you have the 24-hour time, and then you have world time as well. And they are adjusted by these two. And so basically what you do is you just unscrew these caps, and then there are your crowns. So this crown adjusts the time. This one is just a pull-push to do the alarm. This one right here does the world time, and this one right here does the 24-hour time. And so they screw back on and kind of keep it all protected. And like I said, I knew that I, I kind of liked this watch when I looked at it, thought, God, that's horrific. And then I tried it on and I was like, if I put this on a really chunky bracelet, this will actually be quite nice. And so that's what I did. And so now I absolutely love it. And I've been wearing this watch more than any of them just recently. Uh, I've probably worn this every day for the last two weeks. Uh, the bracelet itself was pretty cheap. It was $30 from Amazon. Uh, really nicely made, very heavy, very chunky. Uh, and then the watch itself, I only paid $75 for, uh, which I thought was a steal. So all in all, $100 watch that, it's not to everybody's taste, and I figured I would start with the one that is probably gonna polarize you guys the most. But I really like it, and I like it because it's so ugly. So where should we start? Let's start with ones that you've probably seen before. So this one right here, this is an Era Turbion. Now, this was a Producer Michael giveaway watch, and we actually uh, gave away one of these. Michael has a diamond version of this, uh, and then I have one too. And this is a really interesting watch because Turbion watches, obviously, they're famously super expensive, $100,000 or more for a Turbion. And then what happened is the Chinese started to make Turbion movements and they made them for a very, very low price point, which meant that companies were able to offer Turbion watches, luxury Turbion watches, for a fraction of the cost. Now, I love watches, but I'm not a watch snob. So to me, a Turbion is a Turbion. It looks cool, it's a cool looking movement, and this watch with the sort of skeletonized case that you can see through, the Turbion sits right here on the bottom. Uh, and then on the left-hand side, we have uh, the GMT dial. So that gives me my time back in England. So right now I know that it's uh, two o'clock in the morning because that's where my family are. So it's always nice to know what time it is there. And then we also have the sun and moon phase on the other side. So I can see that the sun is starting to set and we're starting to go around into nighty night night time. Um, so I actually put this on this blue rubber 
rubber band. It came on a, a different strap, uh, but I thought that the blue rubber band really did make it look special uh, with the blue hands inside and, and the blue detail. So yeah, a very fun, very affordable watch. Obviously it has the, the sort of status of being a tourbillon without having that price tag. So I love this watch. It's a really nice dressy watch. I'll wear it if I go out to dinner, if I'm wearing a shirt, something like that. It's a lovely watch to wear for those kinds of occasions. The kind of polar opposite of that is actually a new one that I've just got. It's so new that I haven't even adjusted the strap. Look at the size of that. I have pretty big wrists, right? And I don't even have to undo it to get that strap on. What kind of people, S-Force, do you think are wearing your watch that have wrists like that? That would be a 600 pound man that would put this on. Anyway, this is an S-Force and this one, it's so big. It's so big and so heavy. These really, they're, they're nothing special in terms of, they're not particularly expensive. Uh, they aren't, uh, th this one obviously has a digital uh, display in there as well, as well as uh, the regular face. Um, so it has a stopwatch, it has an alarm. So this is basically just a really nice chunky. I wanted a gold watch because I didn't have one. This is sort of like a more towards of a rose gold. Um, and obviously I love my big watches. So I just thought this would be a really fun watch to get. Uh, obviously the, the bezel moves around. Um, and it's just an absolute monster. So if you want to wear a watch, it's very much a streetwear kind of watch. I'd wear this with a white t-shirt and jeans, that kind of thing. Um, and it's just enormous. I mean, on my wrist, like I said, I need to adjust this. It's so funny. I need to adjust this strap. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a big watch. Now, I do well with big watches. I really struggle to wear anything smaller than like a 42 millimeter because I feel like it looks too small. And this one definitely is not. So this one, it's a fun Fun piece, uh, like I said, not expensive, but I just figured that it would be interesting uh, to have in the collection. It's so big, it doesn't even go in the, the box. So let's move along. Let's do this one. This is one that you guys have probably never seen. This watch is an Autodromo Group B. So this here is inspired by the Group B rally cars. This is a limited edition watch. So this one is number 127 of 200. And this one is uh, was actually gifted to me by my friend Mike, uh, who I worked on an RPM YouTube show with. And one Christmas, he bought all the crew one of these each. Uh, and so these are really fun because the bands you can actually change out. Um, and I didn't bring the box with me, the box is upstairs, but basically they have all of the Group B rally car liveries. Um, so I like to run the Audi Sport colors, which is the black, red, and dark gray, um, but there are all kinds of, of different ones. And it's just a really fun watch. It's tiny, it's so thin, and it's so light. It has a titanium back, stainless steel chassis, and then a titanium bezel as well. And it's just a really interesting, low key watch that, you know, when it's on the wrist, it's probably a little too small for me, um, just because I have big hands. But I do really enjoy watching this watch. It's a gr watching, wearing this watch. It's a great everyday watch, uh, and I've put a lot of hours uh, on this thing. And yeah, it's just a really, really fun watch. And what makes it the most special is that it was given to me as a gift. Uh, and so I'll always cherish that. So thank you, Mike. I really appreciate this watch. Okay, next up, the neon yellow one. Now, obviously you'll know that my brand colors are neon yellow uh, and black. And so this watch, when I saw it, was absolutely perfect. And in fact, the reason I bought this watch wasn't because I thought that I would like it right off the bat. It was because I actually went in to buy one of these G-Shocks. So we'll do two G-Shocks at the same time here. So this is the GA2100. This is called the Casio. And this watch is a very cheap one. It's $100. And this basically became a little internet phenomenon because it looks like uh, an offshore, an, an AP offshore Royal Oak uh, with the, the shape of the, uh, the face and the bezel on it. Uh, and so it just kind of became this little cult like pop icon uh, and you couldn't get them anywhere. Like I said, they're only $100. So they're not an expensive or limited edition watch, but people just loved them. So I managed to track one of these down while I was in the UK. And uh, I actually ordered two because they could get two in for me. So the two were meant to show up at the shop. When I turned up to pick it up, only one had arrived. The other one wasn't gonna be there in time before I went back to the US. So I got my money back for the second one and I bought this because I was like, I probably need a neon yellow G-Shock. 
And then later on I found out, once I got it home, that this one is actually really interesting. It's a Bluetooth enabled watch. So this one has uh, an app that connects to my, or Bluetooth that connects to my phone, and then the app monitors my steps uh, and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually got way more features than I, I thought it had. I just got it because I like the color. So these are two really fun watches. It's absolutely no secret that I am a huge G-Shock fan. Uh, and so yeah, these two I wear a lot. This one I actually wore in the video where I went to Vegas uh, with Sonia and when I went to Speed Vegas to drive the um, trophy trucks and the Ferrari and the Lamborghini. Uh, that is the watch that I wore because it's quite classy. People actually recently after they saw that I got the Jacob, people saw this in my picture and thought this was the Jacob, which I kind of get that. It's a you know, nice black watch for silver hands. Um, but no, it's uh, you could buy, how many of these could you buy? This is $100, that's $18,000. You guys do the maths. Speaking of black G-Shocks, this is the one that started it all off. This one right here is the first G-Shock that I ever, ever got. And I have absolutely beaten seven bells of bleep out of this watch and it has never let me down. Michael on the Producer Michael channel famously threw this on the floor when I got my Panerai and it's still going, well, it's not going because the battery's run out, so it needs a new battery. But I think I've had this watch probably eight years now and they still sell them, they're $100, they'll last forever, they're nice and big, so on the wrist it feels nice, um, it looks great. I absolutely love this watch. I'll keep it forever. It's kind of my, my classic G-Shock. In the very early days of the Producer Michael channel, uh, when we would go and look at expensive watches, Michael would be balling out with some blingy diamond thing, and I'd be wearing this, and it kind of got a little bit of, uh, little bit of a following. So I will always, always be a G-Shock fan, uh, and I typically wear G-Shocks as my daily watches because they are just so sturdy and tough, and I love the look of them, and they'll never let you down. Next up we have this Panzera. Now, this is the, I think it's called the Racing Master. I'll, I'll put link, I'll put uh, descriptions to all of these watches so that you know what they are. I'll put graphics. And also I will link all of them in the description so you can check them out. Uh, beautiful, classic looking watch on the brown leather band. Really, really quality, classy looking thing. What I love about this watch and the reason it's in their racing collection is that it has a big face and it has very easy to read, uh, a very easy to read dial. So when you're driving and you just want to glance at your watch, there's no mistaking what time it is. I really like this watch and I've worn this one a lot. I actually love my Panzera watches. Uh, I've been wearing them for the longest time. Uh, they actually, this, this box in fact, so Roger Cooper, who is the owner of Panzera watches, he reached out to me very, very very early on into the producer Michael channel and he uh, sent me a watch which is the next one that we'll get to uh, and he was like look mate you know I, I see you you're around all these nice watches check this one out see what you think uh, and here's a case as well to start off your collection and I remember when he sent me that I didn't have I think I had three or four watches two of them were G-Shocks um, and yeah it was empty and now it's filling up very nicely so Roger thank you sir I really appreciate the fact that you were there to uh, fuel my, uh, my watch addiction from the beginning. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, moved on to a pretty, pretty good standard now. Um, but yeah, these beautiful watches, really, really well priced as well. And like I said, my Panzeras have lasted me forever. Um, I've beaten them up. This one is more of a dressy watch. So again, this is kind of like, a, this is a brunch watch. This is the kind of watch that I would wear if I was going out somewhere a little bit nicer uh, for some brunch or maybe out for some drinks with friends. More traditional looking, smart, dressy, beautiful watch. Really love it. Then on the other side of things with Panzera, we have this one. Now this one is the one that I've had for the longest. It's on this beautiful rubber strap and this is like so soft and so supple and I've worn it to death so the stitching is starting to get a bit grubby. I have dived in this watch, I have worked on my car in this watch, I have flown around the world with this watch. Literally, I, I didn't take it off for probably the first three, four months that I had it. Uh, and you can see that the case has got scratches on it, but the glass itself, not a scratch not a mark on there. So even though there are some, you know, pretty pretty big scratches in the, the bezel itself, the glass is absolutely perfect. It keeps great time and just a, an overall brilliant watch. And I think it looks awesome. And actually, Panzera, Panerai, sound the same, look kind of similar. So if you walked into somewhere with this on your wrist and somebody didn't get like a proper look at it, 
they would think this was a Panerai, probably. Uh, now, I'm not saying that you should buy this watch because you want it to look like a Panerai, but I'm saying the styling cues that have come from Panerai have definitely led to this being one of my favorite looking watches. Uh, and again, a great watch to wear every day. It looks great on the wrist. It feels nice. These rubber bands are amazing. In fact, this blue rubber band is a Panzera band. So this that I have on the, um, uh, the era is a Panzera band. They are beautiful, beautiful watches and I definitely can't recommend them highly enough. Uh, so yeah, I love this one. Roger, again, thank you so much for sending this one to me way back in the day. Uh, really appreciate it. And my love for Panzera is, is as strong as it ever has been. And what I wanna say to you guys as well, is over the, the coming weeks and months and years, hopefully, I am gonna be working with people on this channel and I just want you to know that I will absolutely never put my name to something that I don't 100% believe in, trust, would use, you know, no one's gonna pay me to put their product on this channel if I don't stand behind it, okay? So I just want you to know that. It's early days, we're almost 35,000 subscribers, which is amazing. In five months, we've done 35,000 subscribers. Can't thank you guys enough, and you are the best, the best. The, mess the messages I get, the DMs, like, the comments, I just, I really appreciate you guys. I love doing these videos. I love sharing the stuff that I do with you, and I appreciate you so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And please just make sure that you support the guys that support me. That's all I ask for. If there's something that you see that I'm recommending, you know that I stand behind it. And if you choose to go and support those brands too, that's awesome. That's all I can ask. So next one, the Citizen. Now, Citizen is a brand that I had no idea about. I'd heard of them, but I never knew kind of what they were about. I never realized that they were nice watches until I put my hands on this. And if you remember, there was an episode that I did right in the very beginning of the channel where I started learning how to fly, which unfortunately has had to go on hold uh, because of the coronavirus thing. So I will, I still absolutely am gonna get my pilot's license, but I'm just not sure it's gonna be as quickly as I first anticipated. But anyway, this is an aviator's watch. And this has buttons on here that when you press it, it will actually adjust the little dial and it will tell you how high you are. So here we're almost at sea level, pretty much. Uh, the button I've just pressed is not for altitude, the button I've just pressed is for north-south. So right now, this is trying to point its way to north and it will keep moving around as I move the watch and find north, which is exactly right, it's over there. This one does the altitude. So if I push this one down here, then it should, Still in north south. Do I have to cancel that? I don't know how to do this. Okay, this one should. Ah, there we go. So now the big dial is moving. Uh oh, public safety alert. Beaches and trails. This is what I'm saying, guys. Beaches and trails are now closed. Do your part, slow the speed of this deadly disease. Stay home this weekend and weekdays until April the 19th. Yep, that's it. That is our official public safety lockdown. Okay. That's fine, we'll get through it, we'll deal with it. Anyway, back to the watch. So this gives you uh, your altitude as well as north-south. So beautiful watch, you can move the, uh, the bezel around as well. And this was actually a Christmas present from Caitlin Taylor Rowe. And I absolutely love it. Uh, it's also an eco drive, which means that it gets charged through daylight. So it's kind of solar powered, which is awesome. Uh, I didn't even know that that was a thing, but apparently as long as this thing can see a bit of sunshine every now and again, it'll keep going for you. So I absolutely love this watch. Uh, I wear this. Uh, this one is kind of somewhere between like a daily watch and a smart watch. Obviously also if you're flying, then it's great. Uh, and if I go on hikes and things and I'm going through elevation and drives especially, and I wanna know how high I am, then this is a great watch for that, obviously. Um, so yeah, love this watch, beautiful looking thing, uh, very industrial and rugged looking. So yeah, I, uh, I love this one and I wear it very often. So coming into the big boys now. So let's start off with a watch that isn't mine. Well, how's this for a continuity nightmare? I just finished the video and I realized that actually it had cut right as I got to talk about this next watch. So I've got to do the rest of the video again. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. This is the problem when you're trying to record something like this by yourself. I think I hit the record limit and then it turned off. But anyway, Let's carry on. So, 
Let's move on to this Rolex. And I don't remember how I just ended talking about this because I ended talking about this about 15 minutes ago. And so if this isn't a very smooth segue, I apologize. But uh, you know, this is the best I can do. <laughs> this watch, oh, I think I said something like, let's go and get onto a watch that isn't mine. Something like that. Okay, so this isn't mine. So this is a Rolex Datejust. Now, this watch isn't mine. This one is actually on loan to me from Viren. Uh, that's a company that we did a video with for the Producer Michael channel, and they rent luxury watches. It's kind of like a, a membership thing. Every 12 months, uh, they send you seven watches, I think. Um, so this is the first one that I've had from them, uh, and I absolutely love it. The only thing I would say is it's a little bit too small for me. Um, the ro this is the first Rolex that I've ever actually worn, the first Rolex that I've ever been able to spend a lot of time with. And there's one thing that I will say, which is that on the wrist, they feel special. Like, they are a really, really good-looking watch. Um, this one, it's just my wrist is just too big for this. Um, which is fine because I know that not everybody has monster wrists and hands like I do and this would be perfect for somebody that can get away with a more subtle low profile watch but nevertheless it is absolutely gorgeous the blue face is stunning the bracelet just everything about it is just oozes quality and finesse and just it's a, it's a gorgeous watch and you can see why Rolex are the biggest brand in watches the biggest name in watches because they're every Everything about it, like when you undo the crown and dink, you feel it spring out. Like you feel that positive click as it come out, as it comes out. And then when you wind it, there's resistance there. It just, it feels quality. So like I said, this is the first Rolex that I've ever spent a lot of time with. And I would definitely, definitely, definitely buy a Submariner Deep Sea right now. That's a Rolex that I would spend my own money on. But I've really enjoyed having this, and they're actually going to send me something new very soon. I think maybe a Hublot, which is cool, because I've never spent time with those either. Um, so next up, and this is so weird doing this twice, because I've already gone into this. Next up is the Panerai. Now, this is probably the most famous Panerai on the internet. Uh, so I was gifted this watch by Michael and Seth at Essential Watches in a video. And this is my very first luxury watch. And I have always loved Panerai's. I love how simple they are, but I also love the fact they have this crown protector on them. It's such a beautiful styling cue. It's very different. And I think that's probably why I like this ugly thing, because it reminds me of this. You pull this little arm down, and then that releases the, uh, the crown, and then you can wind the watch uh, and set the time and date. There's a power reserve down here. That's how you know how much juice it's got left in it. And then there is a sub-dial, which tells you the seconds uh, in there as well. The bracelet is stainless steel and titanium. And this is a watch built to last. Now, uh, Panerai started off as military watches, uh, and then they became uh, kind of fashion watches. And I believe the original ones actually had Rolex movements. So they were a, a Panerai case, but with a Rolex movement. And I would love, 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 love to get hold of an original vintage Panerai with a Rolex movement. I think that'd be very special. But I've worn this watch. Believe me, I've worn this watch. In fact, I fell off my electric bike when I thought I'd broken my leg. I was wearing this watch. And all I did was scratched a couple of the links. I've just got a little scratch in them. But you know what? I don't care. And it's not because I don't care about this watch. It's because I love this watch. And so those types of things you know, I'm wearing this watch because I want to wear it. I'm wearing this watch because I enjoy it. I'm not going to put it on a pedestal and, you know, treat it with absolute care and, oh, God, I couldn't possibly get a little scratch on it. It doesn't matter. This watch is built to last. And although, yes, it is an expensive luxury watch, it's the kind of watch that I want to wear every day. And so I do. I wear this watch a lot. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a couple of scratches in it. They'll polish out. It's not a big deal. The watch is still working absolutely fine. And that is a testament to the build quality of these things. I love my Panerai. I really, really do. And talking of watches I love, now, now we're on to the big one. This, my friends, is the Jacob & Co. Epic X. And this was a present given to me by Michael and Jacob literally three weeks ago, four weeks ago. We went into the shop to do a video for the Producer Michael channel. And as soon as Jacob pulled this out of the box, I was like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Let me see that thing. This watch is such an Adam watch. I love the fact that you can see through it. I love the fact that it's got this skeletonized case. I love the fact that it's all black 
with just a couple of little red accents uh, on the uh, minute and on the hour hands and then on the X on the Epic here. And then inside, you, you'll just about be able to make it out. It says Jacob & Co in red as well. But it's such a subtle watch, but it's so special. Uh, and I just absolutely love this watch. And what I like about it is that it's kind of like a bougie G-Shock. Jacob, don't kill me. But they're the same type of watch. Now, obviously, this is a lot more special. But I think that's why I love it so much. Because it's got that same, like, rugged utilitarian look. Now, this one is all rug, rug, all rug, all rugged and utilitarian, not much finesse. This one is a lot of finesse with some kind of, like, rugged style cues. Um, but I love the fact that it's got this honeycomb rubber band so that you don't get sweaty. Jacob wears his when he goes on holiday, like, around by the pool and stuff. It's his sort of sports watch. And so he actually said to me, wear it, use it, put it through its paces. And I said, well, look, I free dive. So if you're happy for me to wear it free diving, then I will. He said, please do and send me pictures. So I'm gonna wait until I go somewhere special to go free diving. And then I'm gonna wear this and get some pictures of it. Um, but it just really is an absolutely gorgeous watch. And what I love about it is that the balance wheel in the bottom here, that actually looks like a tourbillon. So if you compare it to this era, they have the same sort of look even though this isn't a tourbillon, it kind of looks like one. I'm not saying you want people to think your watch is something it isn't, but just the style is very nice. Um, and so yeah, this is really is a beautiful watch um, and I absolutely love it. I wear this one a lot too. Um, this one is the kind of watch where you can get tricked into thinking you should wear it every day, which you should, but not if you're someone like me. For example, I had it on the other day. I got showered, I put it on, I went to the shops, I came back and I started working, <laughs> working in the garden. And I was just about to plunge my hand into a plant pot to pull out the old soil when I kind of caught a glimpse of this on my wrist and I was like, maybe I should just take it off and put on a G-Shock or something. So I did, I took it off. But that's the thing is that it's the kind of watch where it's very understated. When you wear this thing, people aren't gonna immediately look at it and be like, wow, what is that? And that's what I like about it. It isn't shouty, it isn't over the top. If you know, you know, and if you don't, then it's just a cool looking watch. And that's what I'm all about because I do like the more kind of fancy watches and obviously the big blingy ones. Um, but if I'm gonna wear a watch like this, every single day, then I don't want it to draw too much attention. And this is just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful timepiece. And I am so glad that I have it. And weirdly, it's the most expensive thing I own. And that's so crazy to think that this little thing on my wrist is worth more than any other single object that I own. Um, and what that kind of got me thinking about when that became a realization is that actually, the thing about watches and the beauty about collecting watches is that it isn't about the price because as much as I absolutely love this watch, I love this watch to death, I also love this watch. And when I put this watch on and wear this, I like it just as much as when I put this one on. And now don't get me wrong and think that I'm saying that, you know, this is as special as this because it's not. What I'm saying is that there are certain things, there are certain enjoyments Enjoy, is that even a word? There are certain pleasures that this gives me that this one doesn't. Likewise, there are certain enjoyments that this gives me that this one doesn't. And that goes for all of them. So the point I'm trying to make here is that obviously it's very easy to look at watches and look at the expensive ones and only want those. Only think that you're gonna get satisfaction in owning a watch if it's super expensive. And that's not the case. Because while I absolutely love this, I also love a lot of my other watches. I love all of them. And so it doesn't matter if you're spending $100 or $18,000 or $100,000. They all have to mean something to you. So if you're into watches and you are looking to build a collection, whether you're a millionaire and you can afford the expensive ones, or whether you have to work hard to pay for a $100 watch, just enjoy them and buy a watch that speaks to you. Put it on, wear it, feel how it makes you feel and how it looks. and you know, don't think that you've got to go for the expensive ones because you really don't. I love my G-Shocks, I love my Panerai, I love my Panzeras, I love everything. And this is a great selection here because it ranges from 100 to 300-ish, another 300, 6,000. I believe these Rolexes are around that as well. I don't know, I've never bought one. Uh, this one's 1,500 the, uh, and then 18,000, you know? So it's a crib and this one's 100 bucks. 
Like, it's crazy just how the variation in price doesn't necessarily reflect how much you enjoy each one of the, the watches. Um, so just bear that in mind, guys, because it's very easy to get swept up with, oh, I'll never be able to afford one of those. You don't need to. There is plenty out there for you to enjoy that you will love and cherish and, yeah, just wear the hell out of. So uh, that, that's the, the thing that I've taken away from now having quite a nice little collection of watches here. Before I forget, I got something. I said about supporting those that support me, right? Well, Roger at Panzera, when he found out that I had my own YouTube channel coming, he said in his finest Australian accent, well, g'day mate, throw another shrimp on the barbie. Uh, why the bloody hell don't we just do a giveaway? And so I was like, absolutely good sir, let us do a giveaway. And so Roger sent me this, which is an absolutely stunning Aquamarine 45. I actually have one of these already and I didn't put it in the watch collection because I knew that I was gonna show you this one. But Panzera have given me this to give away to one of you guys. And I can't tell you how happy that makes me that I'm in the position where I have companies like Panzera who are supporting what I do and they're able to allow me to pass on those benefits to you guys. Like it, it's, it's such a privilege to be able to do that and it makes me so happy. And this is gonna make one of you guys really happy. And all you've gotta to do to win it is after you've watched this video, go to my Instagram and check out my latest post and it'll be a picture of me with this watch. And all you need to do is comment below the picture, th uh, tag three friends in the comments. There you go, that's what we have to do. Tag three friends in the comments uh, who you think would also enjoy this watch and then share my picture to your stories and that's it. That's all you have to do. So you might recognize this blue strap because I put my blue strap from this one onto this era and these straps are just perfect. Now I don't want to bend it too much because I want this to be brand new for the person that gets it. It even has a sticker on the back still. Um, but it has this gorgeous blue face. You've got the day, you've got the date um, and then the polished Stainless case is just stunning. It's such a classy looking watch. Like I said, I don't want to bend it onto my wrist, but it is just stunning and you are going to absolutely love this. Um, so a huge thank you to Roger at Panzera for allowing me to do this giveaway. I hope you guys appreciate it as much as I do because it's, like I said, it's just so special to me that I get to, to share this with you lot. Um, and yeah, I'm just in the position where I can do this. This is awesome. You know, and like I said, support the brands that support me um, because they are the best. So go onto the Instagram doodad and do the thingy my bob and then win the doodah and then be yippy do. Guys, that is it. That is the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been very different, obviously, just sat here. I brought a little bit of nature into it and there's some nature up here as well and then there's a bit of nature down here too. Um, but yeah, things are going to be different over the next few months, uh, but that's fine. We're gonna make the best of a bad situation. Uh, remember, we're all in this together. So be a good human being. Speak to your friends, contact people, relatives, elderly neighbors. Just, just do what you can to just be there for people. Obviously, practice your safe social distancing, wash your hands, make sure that you stay safe. But if we're all good human beings, then even though this is a shitty situation, we stand to come out of the other side of it having made some real strong and important realizations about humanity. And I know that sounds very like woohoo and you know head in the clouds kind of thing, but it really does. This time, this downtime has allowed me to think a lot about relationships and the things that I'd like to do and people I like to help. And I hope it does for you too, guys. Anyway, let's finish this on a high note. Enter the competition, win the watch. And uh, until next time, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Ring the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, which is every Tuesday at midnight USA time, uh, West Coast USA time. Uh, give this video a thumbs up because that really helps. And until next time, I'm too far from the camera to do the thingy, so we'll just do a smash cut. Until next time, don't do anything I wouldn't do. See ya. Oh,